Is this gonna work? I don't know. I mean, it, it's gonna have to because this is the angle we have. Let me move this, maybe now. Hi, how are you? Um, yes, there's quite the reflection in my glasses. It is what it is. Another weekly vlog is starting today. I have two possible, uh, what's it called? <laughs> I'm looking right at it, treadmill reads, uh, because I'm gonna try to start doing those, and after I film this clip, I'm actually going to hop on the treadmill because we just had dinner, and I've realized some days I just like to walk after dinner. It's just calming to me. Uh, also, it helps, like, digestion or something, I don't know. That sounds scientific, so I'll say it is. But I uh, am going to watch a podcast episode and I'm going to read one of these two. The first one I have is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. She's the same person that wrote The Hating Game as well as 99% Mine. But I did not read 99% Mine. I own it, but I didn't read it because I think it was my friend Whitney said like, no, uh, it was nowhere near as good as The Hating Game, but honestly, I may try it again. I have already read 10 pages of this. I'm on chapter two, and I do like it. Our main character, she works at a retirement home. She works and lives there, and she has not been dating, I guess, recently. And so, so far, what I know is that the person that works at the front desk with her is like a really young intern type of person. Although she's only three years younger than our main character. But she wants to set up uh, Ruthie, our main character, with someone. And that's really all I know. But when I read the back, it does say the per, um, the <coughs> romance novel language, Olivia, come on. Our hero is Teddy Prescott, who is the son of the new owner and also Ruthie, our heroine's new neighbor. Oh, he's tall and tattooed and the most magical hair. I'm assuming that's long hair. I'm going to picture Heath Ledger again. Mm. I just, I stay winning. I am constantly winning. So that is one. And then next up, I wanted to uh, read kind of like a, well, they're all kind of rom-coms that I read, but more of just a comedy. And I think this might be that, but I picked this one up and I am excited to get into this one because I'm um, on the back. It says Crazy Rich Asians meets Bridget Jones Diary, and Bridget Jones Diary is one of my all-time favorites. Is it because of Renee Zellweger, if that is even her name? No. It is because of Mr. Colin Firth. I love that man. I love that man so much. So I don't actually know anything about this one, but I do like that our um, heroine is older. She's 33 and that's really all I got. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of family drama or issues in this, which is something that I like in my rom-coms. I like when there's other aspects than just the, the rom. I want some calm and some fam, you know? And then I'm going to be finishing up these Violent Delights, which I read a little bit more on my very short lunch break today. And we're am I at? I think I'm actually on, yeah, I'm on page 409 because I started to read it on my iPad because, um, I was impatient. Not gonna lie to you and I didn't bring my book to work, but I think that means I have about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? No, 20 pages, which might actually be 20 minutes left of this book. So I'm definitely going to finish this tonight when I get off of the treadmill because I just, we need to finish it, you know? But for treadmill reads, it's one of these two. And I think because I've already gotten into this one, I'm going to do this. And then once I finish these Violent Delights, I'm just going to read this because it seems a little less, what is it called? Romance than it may be comedy and family, which I like that stuff. So that that is this week you have the plans here you got them first i am probably going to i mean i haven't really hmm i haven't really thought it out like a tbr for my what is it called oh my god I keep treadmill tbr but i think honestly it's probably gonna be romances which means i might read more romances which is cool because i have a lot of them because i stress bought them because i thought they would make me happy at the time and they didn't but they are now and they're really all I can focus on them on the treadmill also it's not even that it's the fact that I do want my this arm to be able to swing to and fro and to again because I want to count those stepperoos which I accidentally just put like four steps on here so 
how accurate is it really? I don't know. I talk a lot with my hands. But I want to have it be able to swing. And the only books I can really hold are paperbacks. Because you go, like, I gotta do a little bit of this action. And I would listen to an audiobook. But I don't want to. Because I get bored when I listen to an audiobook on the treadmill. I don't know why. I have to watch like podcasts that I don't actually care about which is really weird and that's a weird rabbit hole to fall down on YouTube but I do it every single time just to have because I've gotten so used to reading where there are people like in real life I always read in public spaces so I can tune people's conversations out so I basically put on transparency mode on my headphones and then I tune it out as if it's people or I put on an ASMR room that has like chatter that you can't actually really truly understand in it like a cafe ASMR I feel like I'm telling you too much about me so I have a package though that I did not buy so don't even but it is from the Amazon and it is from so it says some gifts for good Friday I enjoy your content I suck at these notes hope you're having a great day from Imelda I think and this is so sweet thank you so much um you did not even have to buy me one, let alone two. But okay, this series is one that I need to continue on with because the second season is fully out now. But that is the Discovery of Witches, which is in the All Souls trilogy. But Times, is it Convert, is the latest release. And I think it's more of a um, kind of like side story about one of the other vampires that Matthew uh, has in his life in the original trilogy. I'm on the second book. I just haven't been reading it because I don't really like the time period they went back in. But if y'all can convince me that it is worth reading it, I will pick it up sooner. I'm gonna pick it up anyways, but I just haven't had the motivation because I honestly haven't heard anyone talk about it being good. But I've seen people say that the third one is so good that it's worth getting through that one. Who knows? And then also they got me We Were Restless Things, which this cover, honestly sold me i think it is well honestly every time i see covers like this i think of kayla from books and lala but the beginning line is what made me add this to my wish list and it was last summer link miller drowned on dry land in the woods miles away from the nearest body of water hello what and i think he's trying to contact why did i say it like that uh his close friend Noemi and I don't know I mean it feels like there's some creepy forest things there's paranormal things is this YA I'm not sure but I mean it just sounds good and also this cover is seriously so pretty so thank you so much for these books seriously I made my day I had a stressful day I had three meetings today and you know what though not one breakdown so honestly kind of doing the thing aren't we This is found footage of me, like literally, as soon as this toppled down, my face was just like. <laughs> oh my god, is she okay? We. <laughs> that was really scary. This camera is like way too expensive for me to be uh, not using a true tripod. Bye. Oh my god. Oh my god. So even after all that. All that uh, camera issues we just faced. This just came to my door. I'm gonna read this one and stay. I don't know what it's about, but there's a hot guy that tells her to mow her lawn, and I want war neighbor wars, <laughs> but make it a rom com, I guess? I don't even know where I'm going with this, but this is the one we're gonna pick up now, so I'll tell you later what the heck it's even about. Hello, hello. Have I already intro this vlog? I think so. Okay, so I already have a reading update for you um, because I finished a book. Hello, freaking you, y'all. So 
This is my paperback book sleeve that I use a lot. Although I have a new one to show you that I'm replacing it with. So one second, but I can take this bookmark out now because I finished <laughs> Back in the Burbs. I started this yesterday or actually no. Tuesday when I was on the treadmill and I was absolutely loving it. It was so cute. It says that it's a um it said something about Bridget Jones diary and um it was absolutely that same vibe. I think at least it was this one. Honestly, I've been reading and picking up so many romances lately that I'm trying to get them mixed up. How do y'all do that? I don't know. But this one is about a girl who is getting divorced. She moves to a house that her aunt left her in her will and she decides to take on all the HOA violations, which by the way, HOAs suck. And her neighbor turns out to be quite the um, grumpy grumster. Although he does turn around really fast and get very not grumpy randomly, which I kind of didn't like. I wish he had stayed grumpier a little bit longer, but it's only 319 pages long, so that makes sense. The writing style was fun because I was picturing how I would have seen this as a movie. So I was picturing um, Meryl Streep's younger, hello, character in Mamma Mia 2, and then Colin Firth younger, who that's honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you, that's kind of my go-to who I picture in romances because I typically read romances where it's a nerdy or shy hero who is kind of grumpy. So Colin Firth is like actual perfection. And I've seen him in multiple different roles. So honestly, he can fill in the shoes for any of them. And I love that man. So that's who I pictured because I have taste and you should try it out. I did not like some of the writing because it felt too much inner monologue. It took me out of the story at some points. Like when they would say so, like the word so, like S-O, but they would have like so, so there's like six O's. I just thought it was weird and it felt kind of, um, I don't know if childish is the right word, but it just wasn't something I liked from this. I wish they hadn't done that. Other than that though, I liked this book. I liked that it was exploring her trying to figure out what she wants in life. One thing I also liked is that it was like the heroine really noticed the times where she messed up and she took ownership of that. It was not so much like it's always the dude's fault, even when it's clearly not, which is the issue I had with one of the Bromance Book Club books. Yeah, I definitely recommend this. I think this would be such a fun like Netflix show or something like that. Definitely a fun summer read. I thought it was very cute. I gave it three stars and I do recommend it. Now, I am still only on chapter two of Second First Impressions. I do plan to read more of this this weekend. I just haven't gotten any further into it, but I did start a new thriller and that is Every Value Break, I believe, by Peter Swanson. So I read Before She Knew Him, I think, uh, by Peter Swanson and I remember what the plot was, was this girl went over to her neighbor's house and saw a trophy. I think it was a literal, literal trophy, but it was also like a trophy that he took from someone he murdered because he's like a serial killer or something like that. And that premise is so interesting because he sees her noticing and then it just kind of goes from there. I think that's what I'm thinking. but. Whenever that plot like got to the end, he uses mental health as a spin in there. There's multiple spins, but I just, I don't love that. I think it's like really cheap, lazy writing to use mental health in that way. Especially the specific one that was used is so stigmatized towards that, that I was just like, this could have been better. We could have done better. And then I believe Eight Perfect Murders is also by him and I liked that one. So he's very hit or miss for me, but I'm hoping this is a hit because it is about a girl who is just getting married and she has some person come back from the past right before she gets married saying, hey, if you don't want to get married, let's meet up. And she just squashes that and then he shows up on the honeymoon and that's all I know from that. I didn't read the synopsis of this. I'm just listening to it on script. So even if I don't like it, I don't have to keep it. But I'm not going to go in any further detail plot wise of that because I personally like not knowing a lot when I go into thrillers and I don't know what is a spoiler and what is not at this point. But I have a feeling that there was this one part where on the honeymoon she just mentioned some oddities of the place that they're going and multiple people have mentioned that one person within like the party that's there there's multiple groups of people there 
and in each group at least one person I've been there multiple times whilst the other one had not so I think that's interesting and I'm wondering if it's like a secret circle thing I have some theories but they're totally outlandish and I'm kind of hoping this goes in the same direction that like not your next what is that one that just came out ready or not I kind of hope it goes in that direction it probably won't because I don't know thrill authors just can't commit to making me happy but here's hoping that that happens and I've got about half of it listened to so hopefully we'll be finishing that while I do some patreon things this whole weekend and then I'm piss picking little papa I'm picking up arsenic and adobo at uh, this I'm reading with Mel from Mel reads and it is one of the book of the month picks and I'm very very excited to get into this it is on my April TBR I've read two books so far that are actually on my April TBR. Are you proud of me? Because I'm proud of me. Because what the heck. So yeah, I'm excited for this. I don't know anything about it. Again, I know it's not a thriller. I think it's a cozy mystery. Actually, yeah, it says the first book in a new culinary cozy series. So I am excited. I want to get into reading cozy mysteries. So that's what we're doing. And also the little guy on the back is so cute. But I will be picking this one up when I work out tonight because I've been walking on the treadmill and reading and man, do I get reading done. So the thing I want to show you is this book sleeve from Book Cozy, who I will link down below. I have a code for her as well. So I will link that in the description. You guys should definitely check her out. She has honestly the cutest book sleeves ever. This one she made like custom that I asked for and you can get this same style too. This is a new style to her shop. But it has two pockets here, which I put um, tabs. And I'll also link the tabs I use down below because people have asked me in the other videos. And so they have one and then two. And then this actually is Velcro. So it has the look of a button, like an actual button. But it is Velcro, which is really nice because then it won't fall off. Because I feel like that would definitely be something that I'd be worried about. And then inside, it fits pretty big books. This one is one that I'm also going to be slowly making my way through, which is the European European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman, which is the second book in the Athena Club series, I think. The first one is Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. Honestly, already one of my favorite books, so I am very excited to keep going with it. But I wanted to put a big one in here to show you, like, how big this is. Like, I feel like I could probably fit at least um a quarter silver flames i think i could fit that i don't know if i could make a brandon sanderson fit but i might be able to so like i said i'll link her down below because her shop is amazing and now i have two things to unbox the first is the sips by box this is my april teas so we'll just go through this very quickly so this is the letter that you get every time and then on the back it tells you each tea brewing temperature, steeping time, how much tea to use, all that good stuff that I don't know. And then I have the tea. So this one is from Tea Pigs and it is chili chai, which I can already smell it and it smells amazing. Honestly, I don't know if this is something that's in other states, but there's this furniture shop called Kirkland's and it always smells really strongly and that it smells like Kirkland's, which I don't hate. But do I want to taste it? I don't know. We'll find out. And then this one is just really cute packaging, but it's Moroccan mint, which I do like mint tea. I drink mint tea when I am feeling stressed and or anxious, so that's good. And then this one is a lavender earl gray, and it's high caffeine, which is good to know because I don't really like to drink two cups of coffee anymore, so I will probably end up drinking some of that in the morning time. And then I have this last little guy, which is the cutest tea I've ever seen in my life. It's even cute on the back, I did not see that. So I will be, I, so someone on my video that just went up commented and said that I am a junk journaler, which true, by definition I am. I have to say, I don't love that name. <laughs> like it just, I like, I like calling myself the trash man because I do save a lot of random scraps of things and put it into my journal. And I also like to meme myself. So the trash man, because I collect things and I put it in my journal and they're usually trash. I'm gonna stick with that, but I am gonna put that in a journal. I think I'm gonna reread the Quill Print series. 
or I may reread An Enchantment of Ravens. And then those would be perfect to use in there because that's goblin tea. Honestly, they're kind of the same thing in my noggin, so yes and also all of those journaling spreads that i do i don't normally put like that kind of stuff in my book review journaling spreads which is really all that would be on this channel i put those on my patreon in my life journal spreads so if you ever want to see them that is where you would find them but aside from that i have a book box from Illumicrate and I'm curious about this because it came in this box and normally you know they come in like the big yellow boxes so I am interested in what's going on here but here we have the uh, little pamphlet for the month with all the stuff that's inside and then next month it's going to be dearly departed so hmm this month is dedicated to those with an affinity for death, be that necromancer, assassin, zombie hunter, or a vampire. Well, hello. You had me at... You had me at death. So first up, there is a mug, which I love just even the packaging of this, but it has there and back. Actually, you know what? We're gonna have a new unboxing segment thing where I just show you the stuff up here. I think it looked good in the other vlog, and it also makes the unboxing, at least for me personally, a little less boring. So that's what we're gonna do here. But there is this mug and it is inspired by Queen of Air and Darkness, which I can definitely tell with my, some of my babies. Well, it's, I guess it's inspired by all of the dark artifices, but I love that series. That series was so good. I kind of wish I could reread it for the first time, but also I don't want to not have read it at the same time. That makes sense. Then uh, there is a giant tote bag, which this is the prettiest tote bag that I have. And I've actually started to store all my tote bags within a tote bag because someone told me that I should do that. So I'll be storing all the tote bags in this tote bag because it is the prettiest, but it is from Winter Night, which I have not read that book and or series if it's a series, but I really like this art. So I may have to change that. And then we have this month's pen which says she could choose what she forgot or no i can read she could choose what she fought for what'd she fight for let us know let us know then we have a necklace which actually i kind of like i kind of like this necklace i'm not even gonna lie to you i don't know what it could be inspired by but i like the rib cage look to it and i feel like this is a longer necklace let us see let us see what it is by Oh, it's inspired by T's Heart Glass from the Bone Witch series, which I actually read Bone Witch last year, and I really liked it. I feel like people don't talk about that series nearly as much as they should, considering how much people say that they love villain origin stories or, like, hero turns into the villain stuff. That book is exactly that. I don't know what y'all are doing. Then this is a pin hoop, I believe, which I don't really want to put anything on it, but I just think it's really pretty and I'll probably put it on my little eclectic corner wall thing over there, which I'm going to add some more stuff to this weekend. So this will go very nicely over there. And then we have, oh my God, this is kind of a thick book. So the one thing Illumicrate never fails to do is make gorgeous editions of books, especially the sprayed edges. So this is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. Think I actually, ooh, Every Empire Demands Revolution. Okay, now hold on. Hold on now. I like that. Okay, wait. <laughs> this sounds really good. Oh, the author is an English teacher. That is so cool. Is this her first book though? Because huh maybe this just looks similar on the cover to other books that i've seen but this looks really good oh my god orbit the publisher also just has the best spines i feel like they just look so good on shelves like this mm, mm. i'm a fantasy nerd i love that this has like the old school fantasy look to the top and then kind of ombre is down to just a red a nice red for the author's name so good uh, and then it's got, you know, the gorgeous sprayed edges. Honestly, these are like Merlot colored, which is so beautiful. I'm, I'm just excited to read this. This looks beautiful. And honestly, so one of the characters is a soldier and the other person is trying to win back their throne. Get out. Get out. That sounds great. 
Well, shoot. This was not on my TBR, but technically I haven't filmed my TBR. But anyways, that is it for now. I am going to film the clips <laughs> that were up here right now, and then I'm going to go eat. So I will check in with you guys later after I have read some more. Um, I don't know how much better this is, but we'll deal with it. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be gluing on my nail while I update you because I'm a ding-dong and I just ripped it clean off trying to turn on my camera. So, love that. But I am currently catching up on some planning in my memory keeping journal, which I have shown on here a lot. Um... It's the one that I plan in and I'll show like the stickers and stuff. So I don't want to film. I didn't plan in it last week and I didn't plan in it this week, but I'm going to pre-plan for next week. Um, but I just, I didn't really want to show like, what is that? Like three weeks of planning. Cause that would just be obnoxious. That would just be uh, probably 30 minutes of that. And I don't think anyone wants to see that. So I'm going to just show you the aftermath, what it looks like after I have finished it. I did an ice cream kit for last week's and then I did, well, I'm doing an Easter one that I have, but it's Animal Crossing Easter, which is really cute. And then I have a Tangled one, like the Disney movie that I'm gonna do for next week because I have so many like of these kits saved that I've just never used because I'm like, oh, I'll find the perfect time. But like the perfect time is now because I could die tomorrow, you know? So I have an update. <sighs> I did finish this last night on the live stream and I'm not gonna even talk about it. I'm just gonna say that yes, there is gonna be a vlog for it on my Patreon because of the content. So if that is something you'd like to see, it'll be there. If not, 
Mm. I'm also going to be doing a life journal spread about the live show because it was honestly just so much fun. Uh, that will also be on my Patreon. So that's it. We're not going to talk about that anymore. Uh, let me see. What is this called? This Peter Swanson book. Every value break. So I have three hours and 38 minutes left. I'm currently watching Katie uh, from Katie Colson's vlog. Not vlog. March wrap up. That's what I'm watching right now. And I am gonna get back into listening to Every Value Break. Honestly, hmm. I like this book, but there is like nothing happening. It is definitely one that I'm glad I'm listening to because if I was reading this physically, I probably would have already checked out and just put this right back down because it is uh, quite boring. Mainly because there's just... Like I said, there's a bunch of random hints towards, isn't it so weird that so many people are here that are only men and like none of them are women? Isn't that weird? And it's like, I mean, yeah. Anything else? Oh, well, this lady did just streak out of a bush. So you know what? That is pretty uh, exciting compared to the rest of the story. So that's where we're at with that book. I am about to finish. I don't even have it, so I'll just put it up here as well. I am really liking it. It is so freaking cute. I have about 80-ish pages left, so I'll be finishing that today for sure, and I'll update you either later tonight or tomorrow. I realize I don't update at night because I think that the lighting looks awful, and I don't like how it looks, so that's why there's only pretty much daytime updates. But aside from that, I am going to do like a quick little pan over of this sticker spread that I've done and show you. And then I'm going to get right back to laying down the rest of the stickers for the beginning of April. Um, I have not written anything in this planner. I have it all on my notes pad. Like I put the day and then I put what I want to put in my like memory keeping spread. And then I just lay down the amount of stickers I need. And then I go back and I put down like the other stickers that go along with it to decorate it and like write in. But I don't feel like writing in right now and honestly I need to do some stuff for Patreon that I may have to put this on the um, back burner yet again. But I did do, I did do one week so you know we're, we're keeping up with only being one week behind and good enough for me. But yeah I'm actually, actually I need to Oh my god, I need to edit my April TBR because I need to get that emailed out to them soon. So never mind, that's what we're doing. Okay, bye.
Okay, hello, happy Sunday, everybody. So I finished a, another book yesterday. I finished this one, which I was buddy reading with Mel, and I absolutely love this. I ended up giving it four stars. It is, I've mentioned it before, but it's the first in a cozy mystery series that's coming out, and it set everything up perfectly. There is a really cute potential love triangle going on. Not very love triangly at all currently and honestly it may not pan out to be that way but there's the potential which i really like the potential and the setup for those kind of things and then we have my favorite character her puppy and it it was just good i did not guess who it was although it was pretty obvious now that i looked back but that's my favorite thing about mysteries is when i can't guess it but once i find out and i look back on it i'm like oh yeah, totally should have seen that one coming. So yeah, this was definitely good. Four stars. I recommend. It is obviously one of the book of the month picks if you want to grab it this month in April. I believe other than that, it comes out in May, I want to say. So it is one of their early releases that they get, which I absolutely love when they do that. And then I am picking up two romances because who am I? So the first one I haven't started yet so I'll talk about it really quick but this is Love and Olives. This is a YA romance and it is about a girl who has to go to Greece to help her dad with something. I'm not 100% sure but it's 500 pages which I was not expecting but I don't hate it. And I did read Love and Gelato which I really really loved that book so I'm excited to read this one. I have Love and Luck which is the one set in Ireland. I just didn't feel like reading about it but I found a playlist on YouTube yesterday of songs of like falling in love in the summertime in Greece and I was like let's have the Mamma Mia moment. So that's why I picked this one up and that'll be continuing into next week and then I also have Shipped which is a adult romance. This is about two people who work at the same company. They're up for the same promotion and social media marketing and they have to go on a cruise, which is what they work for. They work for a cruise company. And they have to go on that cruise and basically fight to the death. <laughs> Not really, but kind of for this job. And I said it on Instagram yesterday, but I cannot stop picking up romances now that I've realized that I can just picture everyone as Colin Firth, Circa, Love Actually, and Bridget Jones Diary. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really living my best life with all these romances and I'm already liking this one. It is so adorable. I like it better than, what is that one that I just read, Back in the Burbs? I like this writing style better. It's not as Bridget Jonesy where it's like, you know, 18 O's and the word so and it feels like it's almost a diary entry. This is much more um, stereotypical for a romance that I read at least. So I'm already enjoying this and there's a sister involved and so I'm thinking we're gonna get some familial drama relationship issues and I always like that in the books too. So yeah I'm on chapter five of this but now I have a bunch of editing I need to do. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to jump on to some productivity sprints and do that and try to focus, get some editing done, get those videos put up on Patreon. Uh, I got everything mailed out today I needed to get mailed out, which is good. And I'm gonna get this vlog edited, it's the main thing. So I am gonna try to come back <laughs> to update. We'll see how that goes. But if I don't, the emoji of the day is gonna be a blue heart because I just realized my tapestries across from me are like all blue but you know what it's Beauty and the Beast and Cruel Prince so honestly it is the best but yeah that's it so let's go get started because I lord I need I need to be productive I can't what time is it it is 209 my goal is to be done with everything work related with either thing that I'm doing YouTube or um, teaching I want to be done with all of it by six so let's see if we can get all this done in four hours mm -hmm. 
We'll see.